Hey everybody, Mike Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. Uh oh. I'm in my own house, I don't need that. We're getting so used to it, you know. Anyways, uh, and that is what it is. But anyway, we're going to do video update 82 on the ACT today. And today, I have a lot of things to show you as opposed to before. So let's just get started with this and see what we wind up with. Oh, and I realize I have my Kato shirt on. No, I had to buy this. I actually had to buy this. No kidding. Okay, let's go. Okay, everybody, this is the Mustang. Oh, yeah, you know that. No, we're not going to talk about the Mustang today. Goodbye. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is that little depot up there, which is the de Well, as soon as the train goes by, we're going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it, but we'll let the train go by. Anyway, that little depot I built, it was, I believe it was a Monroe Models. I showed you guys the box, and I think it was Monroe Models. The kit went together good. I bragged about the kit. It, I got it all done, put a light inside of it, and finally I decided where to put it. I made a little notch over there in the scenery, uh, blended that in, then put a few trees around it, put a street light out there, and I think it looks good there. Perfect place for the uh, passenger train to come in on the siding there and drop off the employees for the unobtainium mine. Um, let me turn the light off and see if we can get a picture of it with the lights on the building. And there you go. You kind of have an idea of how that looks with its own lighting. And now... I'll move on down to the other end that I've been working on. Okay, today we're going to talk about several things down here at this end. And one of them is probably very obvious to you right now, which is the glass shelf that I put in to put my, uh, well, my son asked me about my motorcycle trophies here recently and I guess if I had gotten them down, I guess I had talked about it and everything. They're all generally from the 1970, early 1970s. Uh, there is one, the one with the car on it, on the near end here, uh, on the car on top of it. That was for a model contest at a place called Toys by Roy in Albuquerque when I was probably about 14. Uh, that place went out of business uh, shortly after that. But it was the hobby store that I used to go to in the original mall in Albuquerque, which is called Winrock Center, or was called Winrock. I don't know what they call it now. They've redone it. But nevertheless, got my motorcycle trophies down, got the car trophy. Uh, I found those brackets, which are very industrial looking, I think. If you get close to them, I'll get close to them. I'll show you a picture. But anyway, when you get close to them, they're very industrial looking. I realized I had to put the shelf brackets down on the backdrop, which doesn't bother me any because, like I said, this isn't really wasn't supposed to be considered part of the layout, but it's kind of turning out that way. Anyway, I'll show you a couple of things that I had to do to it, but here's a shot of what it looks like. I just picked up the glass. I had them cut a piece of glass for the shelf, um, and I had already checked to see if everything would fit on there, and it does, so we're good to go. Uh, now I'm probably going to go to the shaky cam and we'll talk about everything else over there. Okay, here's a shot of these brackets. I thought they looked kind of industrial. So I picked them up, had the glass cut, and then you know the rest of the story. But when I put the brackets up to clear the trophies, um, I realized that the glass was going to be below the level of the backdrop. So I had to cut the backdrop, cut a notch out of the backdrop. Anyway... That's enough about the shelving. Um, where I'm going to go now is I'm going to go underneath and show you what wiring I've got done, and then we're going to talk about what I have done on the loop here. Okay, as you can see here, um, I was able to finally get all my wiring hooked up, and it's not all tucked up in there because I still have wiring up above that I need to do, which I'm going to get into here in a minute. But you can see that I got my detectors in, I got the switch cat in, I got the reversing, the AR1, which is the larger of the two green boards there. And I have two DS64s under here. And they are plugged into their own power, which goes back over here behind the models. 
and you can see the net uh, the loco net cable and the uh, layout uh, power going over which connects to all of that and um, you can see where all the wires come down through uh, this this wiring will all be tucked up once I get through uh, let me let me uh, change positions here and I'll tell you one other thing I have to do while I'm on the floor here okay one thing I had to do over here was I had to go um, up in there and tie on to the end of my bus wire. Then I took that uh, white violet or whatever that wire was. I think it was white violet. Uh, I had to take these screws out, push it up underneath there because the sheetrock ends and there's a little channel there. Take that screw out and to get that to get the cables over there. Well, what I didn't think of is I also need to tie in a um, Actually, if I swing around, I need to tie in this wire right here, which goes down way down here. I don't know if I can get it. way down here into that Woodland Scenics transformer, which is going to operate all the lights out there. And that has to be tied to the layout power, which I don't have any layout power over here on this side. All I have is power right of the wall. So I've got to go across with a piece of wire like that, another extension. I need to take these screws back out and get that wire over here so I can plug into. There's a power strip over there on the other side that I, sorry about that. There's a power strip over there on the other side anyway, take my word for it, that I've got to plug that transformer into so that it goes, these lights over here on top will go on and off with the layout uh, lights being turned on and off. So. That being said, let's go see what I've been up to on the top. Okay, up here on top, you can see that I haven't done a whole lot. I did bring a couple more. Only the very last bunch of structures that I had out there in the shed, really. I've got a couple more, but they're not relevant to this area. Um, but what I did do, as you can see, I got the lights in and on the fertilizer plant here and I know you can't see very well but I did put a, a light sequencer on some of these lights therefore the light you can see that light over that uh, rolling garage door uh, a light comes on inside there and then you can see the adjoining office a light comes on and off in there I don't know if we'll be lucky enough to see that right now and then the light underneath the awning on the building on the left over here, there it goes. In fact, it just came on. It comes on and off. Um, there is a street light on these tanks right here, which I have not... I pulled the wires off of it when I pulled that off over here on the other side, so I've got to really put another street light on there. I don't know if I can repair that or not. I'll take it off of there and repair it, but I'll probably put a new one on there. There'll be a couple more street lights around there um, on that fertilizer company. And it's kind of bright. Uh, you can't really see. There's a here, let me move this building over there. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> there is a light underneath the awning on the big tall green building over there. You can you can see. Um, I haven't seen any other lights cycle on and off yet, but take my word for it, they do. Okay, there is a light inside of this building here. I have not tied it in. Or did I tie it in? I did tie it in. There is a light on inside of it. Uh, there will be, like I say, a couple of street lights out here. This building is just sitting here in the way for right now. And I have not done anything. I still haven't made up my mind about the back back there. In fact, I'm seriously thinking about building some more building flats and putting them back there. And making them fit that area. I don't have anything that really fits the area very well. I was thinking about moving this building up here, weathering it up a little bit. I never have liked the sheen on this building. Weathering it up a little bit, maybe putting it over here and servicing it with the road that's going to come across here somewhere and go into the fertilizer plant. I also have the nursery buildings, and I thought maybe the nursery buildings would be good over here. What better to have over here than a nursery um, 
since you're right next to the fertilizer company, right? Uh, there's another piece to it somewhere. And there's an office building here somewhere. But anyway, but that might be kind of a nice deal. Uh, they could test a fertilizer there and all that stuff. I thought that might be kind of cool, actually. And that kind of, and that's the first time I've actually set it there, and I'm kind of liking it. I like the pencil there, too. I'm thinking about leaving the pencil there. No, I'm not, I'm not leaving the pencil. But anyway, um, that's the lighting that's going on. I'll, I'll shut the lights off so you can see what's going on here. But for right now, I'm going to get on the stool and talk to you about what I got going on track-wise here. Okay, I'm not very good at holding the camera steady and pointing out things. But um, as you can see, I got lights here. And as some of you may know, this is... This is uh, plywood underneath here and that's on the out there's no access under here's what i'm trying to say that's underneath on the outside that is my table saw and all that stuff so there was no access so what i did and i'm going to lift this up real quick i put all the boxes in there and all the wiring goes underneath this building right here and there's plenty of void in the foam down there to be able to put more wiring and so forth down there then what I did is I just took a knife a sharp serrated knife which I can't get this stupid thing to focus I took a sharp serrated knife and I just made a cut across and then stuck the wire down in it that goes over to this building if that makes sense uh, then I made a cut here that goes over to here I had to cut out a piece of the plaster here so that I could take hang on my special tool brf 32 q here i could heat it up and i could run this underneath here heat it up and make a hole then if i move this you can see that there is an adjoining hole on the other side which i fed the wire through made another cut fed the wire over here made another hole and then over here i had to do some seri serious uh taking out of material um I wouldn't have had to take out this much material, but honestly what happened was this this plug that you see right here was the turnout, um, where am I at here, way over there, the turnout that is now 25, that goes into where the stockyard will be. For some reason I screwed up and left it uh, dead-ended over here, so I had to attach an extension onto it to get it down where I needed to get it onto the uh, DS64s. So. The plan here, though, worked out well, and I only have little tiny places that I can cover with small pieces of plaster cloth. Then I can do the scenery work on top. So once I get the, the uh, wiring done for the lighting and get as many lights out there as I want, um, I can pretty much start putting scenery material over it. Now, the way we'll go about this is we'll probably go from this hole on the back of on this hole that's under this building I'll probably make another small hole here and another one here, just like we do in real life with a backhoe. I'll run my little special tool, special tool BRF32Q, uh, heat it up, run it underneath there. Then I will cut a notch to wherever these buildings wind up being because they're on a piece of styrene. And I will, I got to light these buildings, by the way. They don't have any lights in them. So once I have that accomplished... Um, I will put another big hole underneath that building complex there to put another hub in because I have an expansion hub under this building and I will take a lead out, go across here and over to there and put another expansion hub over there to feed the buildings all on that side of the track over there. So I should be able to with port sharing and everything else, I should be able to accomplish some pretty decent lighting over there. Uh, of course, when the stockyard goes in here, there will be probably street lights around the stockyard. Probably not much lighting in the structures themselves, just around the stockyard. Uh, that's easy. They all go into one plug. Anyway, that's enough of that. But these buildings, I don't know how they're going to go, if they're going to go. The the uh, bus depot seems to be a real problem here. Um it's just too wide, too thick, too long. Um, but I don't know. My hobby shop, 
as you saw, this is Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. Um, I don't know where it'll go, if it'll go, if I have a place for it, I'll put it there. Um, anyway, enough of the lighting and so forth, enough of what I had to tear up. Now let's talk about the track. Okay, I guess... From the wiring that I showed you down below, you probably already guessed. I got all this track working, got all the turnouts working. I decided since I have like 14 turnouts or so that are controlled by the DCC on the other on the uh, other side of the branch line, uh, with the buttons and so forth, and all the ones out on the main line, that uh, I would start numbering these at 21. So I have 21 through 25, I think. So as you can see to the DS64 in the tunnel right there, I have 21 is the one in the tunnel, uh, 23 flips both the sidings over here, 24 is going into the fertilizer plant, and so on and so forth. Um, 22 comes down into the staging area, which is, this is a total disaster. I hate to show you guys this. I got cars laying on their side. I got junk laying all over. That I haven't cleaned up yet. Uh, in fact, that seems to be my my mo. But nevertheless, um, the track in here is all working. I have proven that the switch throws when the train comes around the loop. It detects and throws the switch, um, so it can be fully automated if need be. Um, and all the switches out here work, and I can push trains in and out. I've done all of that. So basically what I'm telling you is I have all this working out here. So that being said, I've rambled on probably long enough. I don't know what else I can tell you here. You know how I am. I'll probably think of something. But I think we'll just take one or so shots of the train running around. Okay, everybody, that's about it for video 82. I, uh, as you can see, I've been out here trying to get lighting and wiring stuff done before I can move on with scenery stuff and really figuring out too much what I'm going to do as far as buildings over there. But I'm pretty convinced that I am going to make flats to fit in over there that are more industrial looking or not industrial, but city looking possibly. I don't know if I want any more industry, industry, industry over there. Uh, but I do want something to blend into the backdrop that's there. So I will work on that, and we'll try and come up with something that makes sense over there. Um, like I say, unfortunately, the McDonald's, the Greyhound bus probably won't work. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is, and I've bored you guys to death enough today, I'm sure. I always say that, but I know you guys think it's not boring. I think it's boring because I get tired of talking about it, especially after I've thought about it and thought about it and thought about it until I get to the point of doing it. But uh, anyway, there you have it. There's 82. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.